because he's worthy yes, he is. to be praised. Yes. He's an awesome man, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to honor this shepherd of this place. My God, and thanks for the invitation. I take nothing for granted. And I take nothing lightly. Yes. Because it's the Lord's doing yes. in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Or quickly do everything protocolly. Yes. But I see in the spiritual realm something going on up in here. Yes. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Yes. I almost don't want to shut it down because y'all got me messed up. Look here, man. You got me messed up. Something about the name Jesus. Yes. Yes. That's over here. Yes. 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 I want to. Yes. Yes. Y'all just to quickly bow your heads in prayer. Yes. Yes. Lord, we thank you for this day, yes. for this hour. Yes. We give you glory. We ask that if there be anything in our lives that prevents the prayers and deliverance from being heard, set and done, set free, forgive us, Lord. I want everybody to say, I repent in Jesus' name. I repent in Jesus' name. I want you to yell to the rooftop, I repent. I repent in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, use me mighty for your glory. Yes. Let flesh die, let there be no self gain here for us. Let the power of God yes. take over this house. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where is that testimony? You've been suffering. You're in pain right now. I don't know you from a can of worms. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. The enemy is trying to kill you. My God, my God. I see a knife in one hand. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is a time for you to press in like you would not believe. Come on, it's not a time to be playing church. Yes. It's a time for you to give it all you got. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. There's some breakthroughs in this house. Yes. 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 If you all want them, you got to believe like if you know if I walk over to this fan, then I'm going to get some fresh air. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, you see, it's nothing about any of us unless God is in the midst. Unless the Lord is breathing down. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see, I went through hell in order to get you here today. I didn't know if I would be able to make it. My head was hurting. It was splitting. And I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. yes. But I, I'm smart enough to know as a woman of God yes. that when the enemy is trying to block you, it's time to press in and press in hard. That's right. That's right. Because I know that breakthrough is, is coming on the heels of it. Yes. I thank the Lord for my son. Yes. He's an awesome young man. Yes. He's, he drove me here. He told me what time to be in his house. And he was ready with three boys when I got there in the driveway. I said, thank you, Jesus. Yes, I made him late. Late in his time. Because I was trying to press in. There's some time when you got to press in, you have nothing else left. Yes. You got nothing left. Say nothing left. Nothing left. I mean, say nothing left. Nothing left. And that's how it is sometimes. You got absolutely nothing left. You feel like giving up? You feel like throwing in a towel? Because you got absolutely nothing left. That is the time that you got to press in. And you got to go hard. Do y'all understand what that means? You got to go hard. You got to go like they thinking you made out of wood. You got to go hard. You can't let them see you sweat. When you go in behind closed doors, fall on your face and cry and wail well, like a baby. Yes. But when you in front, you got to go hard. Yes. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my God. The devil is a lie. Yes. I still feel a slight headache. Yes. But I want you to know it's dissipating. Right. Yes. Because I have the authority to speak that thing on. Yes. Yes. You all understand me? You better back up from me. In the name of Jesus. I am excited about what the Lord has given me to do. 
it is time out for you all not receiving what God has for you. That's right. That's right. It is time out. I, I feel like crying for myself sometimes. You better go ahead. Let the truth be told. Yes. But then after I wipe my tears, guess what? The problem is still there. My, 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 my. I want everybody to ball your fist up like you get ready to put somebody out right now. Yeah. You know what you mean? I want you to ball your fist up. I want you to get your best fist. Yeah. I want you to get your best blow. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. When I say one, two, three, punch, knock out, I want everything you're dealing with, every problem that you've been facing and trying to destroy you. I want everything that's been beating you down this week, everything that's been trying to destroy your mind, your finances, your children, your job. I want you on the count of three. I want you to knock it to the pit of hell, and then I want you to put your foot on top of in the name of you to a dead break. I speak prophetically with this knockout, with this blow. Everything is going to change. Nothing down. 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 Nothing
again. See, I gotta tell you all. Cause see, a lot of you stuck because you don't believe. A lot of you stuck because you don't believe that the Lord can, is capable and able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that working within. See, if you can think of it, it ain't big enough. Let me give you an example. See, I got to see proof of God. Today, your life gonna change. Today, the devil done tried too hard to keep me from here. Too hard. I could barely lift my head this morning. Mm -hmm. I knew the Lord was going up to something. Yes, yes. There was a young man that needed a job. I gave him a job to come and work for me in my store. My health drink store. It's not nothing big, nothing great, but it's great because of God, not because of me. Yes. Yeah. He didn't have a car. Because he had a fight with his girlfriend, his lover, he should have been shacking up in the first place. And she came in the middle of the night and took this vehicle. His nice BMW that he was floating on looking good, he thought everything was good. In the middle of the night, like a thief in a rock, she took him and drove it away. So he had nothing to ride on the next day. I said, do you want a car? He said, I ain't never bought nothing for myself. I said, it's time to come up out that mow. You've been stuck long enough. I said, I'm going to make a phone call. And I want you to go. He said, I don't have a down payment. I said, I said, go. Uh -huh. <laughs> I made a phone call. Uh -huh. You don't know who people know. That's what Everybody knows somebody connected to somebody else connected yeah. to that person. Yeah. Yeah. I made a phone call. That young man used to buy health drinks from me. And then I gave him a job. I said, I need this young man to get a car. I said, I put my seal of approval on it. My name. He's going to pay the bill. He cannot afford a down payment. I need his car payment not to be higher than this. He does not have anything. I need you to put him in a new car. He said, Miss Thompson, I'll see what I can do. I wait for somebody else to make a phone call to that same person. I'm looking at him, but I'm going to turn my head. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Before that night was over, that young man drove away from the parking lot with a brand new Honda Accord. Do y'all hear what I'm saying now? He called me up and said, Miss Thompson, I want to show you my brand new car. I said, but I didn't even get a chance to send up a, a statement showing you were going to be working for me. And I I said, are you sure you got a car? He said, Miss Thompson, I'm on my way home. I said, well, praise the Lord. So I got on the phone. I, I made a phone call. I called the dealership. I said, um, I never sent you all any verification of the young man's income or nothing. They said, we took care of everything. I said, whoa, my God. A good man is better to be chosen than men of riches. Do you all understand what I'm saying? All you need is faith. Jesus. I got to give you all the word. Well, I got to be obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to give you my three points. And I'm going to give you the, the word that we're going to be coming out of. But I got to shift and do what the Lord just told me to do. Hmm. The Lord loves you enough to not allow you to be stuck. That's my topic for today. The three points of reference is the point number one, the battle is over. Hallelujah, Jesus. The point number two, I heard you cry. Yes. Get what? I heard you cry. Yes. Point number three, victory is waiting around the corner yes. for you. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. I'm going to give you the scripture out of Luke 12 and 17. And then I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. Yes. See, but sometimes when the Lord have you on a Sunday, uh -huh. You got to do stuff that don't even make no sense to yourself. <laughs> My God, from Zion. Luke 12 and 17. It says, out of the King, New King James Version. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? You tired of being stuck? 
You've been holding everything in your hand. Yeah. Everything you get, you've been holding on to in your hand. You've been trying to build up a big old pile so you can store all your goods so that you'll be good in the time when everything is bad. But I happen to know the word of the Lord said if the famine comes now, if, if the famine comes, it will not come now, my dwelling. Yeah. So you can never really prepare yourself for everything that the Lord has. Yeah. Yeah. You can store up all you want to store. But the Lord loves you enough to not allow you to be stuck. When you're going through a famine, you got to sow out of your need. Yeah. You got to sow out of your, with your seed. Yeah. Do you all understand that? Yeah. If you want a break, through. Yes. Begin to bless somebody else. Yes. Even if it's your last nickel or dime. Because yes. I promise you yes. the Lord will give you more back than you can ever imagine. Yes. Here I said, Lord, I, you want me to go to Luke 12 and 17? Uh -huh. What is that all about? Because that's what some of you all been doing. You've been storing up every little dime. You all come to church. The last time I came here, the Lord had you to sow a seed to the woman of God who's been feeding you the word of God, who's been laying up crying. And I feel that the wilderness turned back dry again after I left. And here we go again. Hmm. But this time, I asked the Lord. You see, I sent her a word. She didn't get it. Because it wasn't for me to tell her. She said, where about Kima? For me to give her a call. That did not happen. So she didn't know really for real whether I was going to be here today. I'm not an she? But, she. but she knew in her spirit. Right? Amen. Let me tell you. I decreed and I declared the last time that I was here that there would be financial blessings in this place. For in order to continue to receive your blessings, you had to continue to open your womb. See, it is not you sowing one time and then closing your hand forever will you continue to be blessed. When you open your hands, you got to leave it open so you can get something back in your hand. Do you all understand what I'm saying? When I left here, it didn't just, the prophecy didn't just go for you all. When the prophecy was released, it was for me too. So I got some checks in the mail from, from class action lawsuits that I didn't even know anything about. They sent me a check. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about these play, play places suing these companies. But because had an account with them many years ago. They found my name in the, their database and sent me a check. I got more than one. Do you all understand? The blessing is residual. It's not just for one person. So I'm decreeing and declaring it again. But you all got to get it this time. Because if you don't get it, the next time I see you, you will be still digging in your pockets with nothing coming up. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know what they did? Do you remember what they did? Do y'all remember the story? Who marched around the wall for seven times? Do y'all know the story? Yes. Who knows the story? Yes. What did they do? What? Jericho, what? Why? They gave praise for the top. Take the city. Y'all, I told y'all this is not going to be church as usual. I was sitting over there and I said, I need to bless the woman of the Lord. And I was trying to rationale what I was going to give her. But I want you to know that. <laughs> What I had in mind, the Lord said that wasn't enough. So, what, I, what I'm led to do is going to cause you all to stretch. But what's getting ready to happen is 
I'm not saying if you do it. When you do what I'm getting ready to ask you to do, I see some, have you all seen a tractor with a big old plow on it when it goes into the ground, it scoops up a, a big old plow and it leaves a big hole, it just pulls up all the dirt, it just picks up a big old lump. Do you all understand?
That you don't like this week. 